Check the Lock is the tenth song on clipping his album Visions of Bodies Being Burned, and when I first listened to it, I was amazed at how I could feel the main character's paranoia. So I decided to figure out how Check the Lock makes the listener feel paranoid. And before we get into the video, if you have not listened to the song, please check it out on any streaming platform, as this video will not make a lot of sense, and this video took a lot of effort, so please give the video a like and recommend it to a friend if you can. Thank you. Check the Lock is the spiritual successor to Seagram's track, Sleeping in My Nights, which describes a kingpin's descent into madness. But I also draw a parallel with Aesop Rock's Dog at the Door. Uh, it's probably a cat, might be a guy with an axe, might be a trap, shit is probably a trap, might be a possum in the trash, it's probably a trap. Both of these songs are about people being extremely paranoid. The difference being that in Dog at the Door, it is unknown whether the enemies are real, whereas in Check the Lock, the enemies are confirmed to be real. Now that we have some background, we will go through the music first and then the lyrics. And I'm going to start this part off by saying that I don't have a music background whatsoever. The music behind this song is very repetitious, which is a common theme in the song as well. There are essentially four noises that make up the music. The echoey beat. what I can only describe as creepy maracas, a creepy synth-like thing, the metal bars, no, never park right outside where he lives. He don't want his ride outside his crib. and a bass line, the lock every time he walk by the door. all of which are affected by echoes throughout the song, which makes the song sound very hollow. Clipping does four things in the lyrics to help the listener feel paranoid. They describe how the Kingpin's life has changed, there's echoes, repetition, and foreshadowing. David starts the first verse by describing how much the Kingpin's life has changed. He went from being the most feared to the most fearful, spelt out clearly in the first two lines. This shows a massive change in the Kingpin's life, but, and also helps the listener understand how the Kingpin is feeling. But this section is more about how things in a normal person's life are now scary for the Kingpin. In a normal person's life with a cell phone, they're accessible and contactable. However, the kingpin keeps his phone on airplane mode without a signal. Goodbye to the outside world. You're in the safe house now, so I'll need your phone. Why? Internet, cellular signals, they're too easy to trace. He keeps his car windows tinted, not because it's cool, but so that he cannot be recognized easily. When driving, he repeatedly looks at the rearview mirror every seven seconds to see if he is being tailed. When it comes to parking, a normal person will look for the closest parking spot possible. Like my mom, she will drive around for 15 minutes just so that she can lose one minute from her walk to the store. But for him, he doesn't park near his house, so that no one will recognize his car. And he will only park on busy blocks so he can blend in with the crowd. Sleep is a problem for the kingpin, as he is haunted by bad dreams, but more importantly, he is vulnerable when he's sleeping. He cannot keep an eye out for himself with his eyes shut, and he doesn't trust anyone to keep an eye out for him. Sleep is such a problem for him that he sleeps with his shoes on so he's ready to run if someone comes inside at night. Echoes are a small but important part of the song. Echoes are used in the background music, but they're more importantly used to emphasize important rhymes. Lines like, First when the Zannies don't work, any panic gears ringing when you call, can't hear you. Every seven seconds, eyes back up in the rear view. This technique is used in most bars at least once. David repeats lyrics and themes constantly throughout the song. For example, the chorus, which is repeated three times, has, has the line, check the lock every time he walked by the door, four times in it. Or, lines that are said in one verse are then referenced in the next. In verse one, he mentions that the kingpin has no signal, while in verse 2, he says that the kingpin is staying off the phone, no one chasing where he'd be in. The final, non-chorus line of the song reveals that he was killed in his sleep with his shoes on. His death is foreshadowed throughout the song, especially because the kingpin mentions to his brother that he should start writing his eulogy, and his brother just laughs it off. As well as, the line that foreshadows his death the most is, wall clock clicking, getting louder by the minute which is a reference to the phrase, the clock is ticking, meaning that time is running out. The location of his death is foreshadowed by the amount of habits he has formed to keep himself safe in his house. He checks the lock every time he walks by the door, he parks far away from his house so people don't recognize his car and find the location of his house, and he keeps the lights off in his house so it always looks like his house is empty. 
And when clipping puts this much emphasis on these habits, it makes the listener think something must go wrong. In conclusion, Clipping's Check the Lock implements many strategies to impose paranoia on the listener, such as describing how the Kingpin's life has changed, using echoes to emphasize important rhymes, using repetition to implant reasons that the Kingpin is scared or things he is doing to prevent his death, and using foreshadowing so that the listener knows what is coming before it happens. The techniques that Clipping uses are also very common in horror movies, as a lot of the inspiration of this album were based on horror movies, most notably Scream on the song 96 Nev Campbell. Thank you all for watching. I really enjoyed making this video, and I was thinking of making more videos, and if you have any ideas for the videos, please leave a comment below. Thank you.